Well, beautiful morning to you guys. We are out here on this beautiful sand flat here. You can get things like tailor, brim, flatties, all sorts of stuff in the shallows. You can see a bunch of stuff busting up in these little shallows here actually whilst I'm talking to you. But anyway, yeah, we've got to run out tide, probably got another hour or two before it hits low. And then we're gonna fish the run in as well, just for an hour or so, not too much time this, this morning. Yeah, just go real back to basics, one rod, a couple little lures, and um, have a great time of it. So let's get into it. All right, so we've got this sand flat, as I said in the intro there, and uh, run out tide next last probably two, two and a half hours. I find that last sort of half an hour, 45 minutes here of the run out, and the run in is when it's juice. So we've got about an hour to play. Wind's meant to pick up a little bit later, but at the moment she's beautiful. No wind at all. I'm actually quite warm for winter, actually. There's some flatty lies. That's a good sign. Plenty of flatty lies. Just got my seven foot 702 SF, I believe it is, uh, Dobbins rod. And six to 12 pound rods. So what's that, like three to five kilo rods. So not super light, not super heavy either. Seven foot rod, two and a half thousand size reel with eight pound braid, and then a 10 pound leader. You really won't break off on anything. So you don't really need to go super heavy. And 10 pounds mainly just for abrasion resistance, especially this time of year, you get the toothy critters. So we'll just see how we go. Cover some ground. Just got a jerk bait on the end here, just a confidence bait, just to cover some ground. And then if that doesn't work, we might I'll go to a plastic or something. I'm pretty fishing pretty shallow at the moment, just so I don't spook anything if there's anything in the shallows sitting here. But as the session progresses, you'll probably see me go up to, you know, knee deep almost waist deep water. Seen a couple of lies in this area, so it's always worth plucking a cast. As I said, we've got a couple of hours, so there's no rush or anything like that. I would like to cover water, because in this area, they tend to sit in patches, so if you find one, they're probably most likely gonna be in the area, hanging around. So the tide here is going from right to left, so I'm casting kind of up this way up current, letting the lure kind of come back down with it, just to kind of cover a little bit more ground a lot quicker. You can go against the tide, I don't think it really matters too much if you're just going for your bread and butter species, so I don't think it matters too much, but yeah, I just find that it's a lot easier, a lot more time in the strike zone and it's not really ripping against the tide. This tide's actually got a fair way to go, actually. Looking at me landmarks from Previous sessions, it's still got a little bit to hoot out, so. Bait spitting just over here. Looks like a little herring or mullet. That's good. So we're gonna represent it with the jerk bait at the moment. So you probably saw just before there's a die with double clutch. I think this is the 75 mil. Now before any of you say, eh, you should get the 90. Yes, I know I should have got the 90 to get the bigger fish or whatever, but um you know, funds didn't persist today and I just honestly forgot. So this is what I had last time as my confidence bait, this sort of size. And uh, yeah, we'll just stick with this and then maybe next session, yeah, I've got some time, I'll go get the bigger models. Oh yeah, there we go. Epic. Good. There we go. That's where I saw that bait. Oh, he's come off, has he? No. Drag was too tight. What's going on there, mate? I upgraded these hooks last night. Yeah, they're still pretty, pretty sharp. I just dropped him. Damn. Damn. Dropped the first one. You can see all this bait flicking in front of me. Don't know if you can see it. It's around here. Find the bait, find the fish, they say. I found one and dropped it. Blew my chance. Oh, right there. Epic. Right there at my feet. Just drag up that drag a bit. 
right there at my feet. Just a little fella. In the right zone though. Donut saver. Mr. Flatson. Cue the comments. If you threw the bigger one, you would get bigger models. I agree. We will do with what we've got at the moment. Only a little fella, but to start. See you, mate. And that's why it pays to, you know, fish the whole way back to your feet. He was probably a rod length or two, just at my feet right here. And you know, I'm sitting in maybe uh, knee deep water. So, could be stacked up along this bank here. Keep going. Oh, there's a hit. Come on. Come back for it. Good hit. Could have been a tailor or something. Usually fuddies just hook up. Bloody beautiful time of year, eh? Nice and cool, not too hot. Generally it's glass out. Sometimes there's a bit of wind blowing up. You can get some pearl mornings like this. Oh yeah, there we go. And then fish too. <laughs> Wow, that's a good one. Oh, he's going. This one feels similar sort of size to the other one. That's why. It's not the target species. Can't get away from these fellas at the moment. What are you doing up here, Mr. Flathead Imposter? There we go, just a little brimson. On that double clutch, it's almost, it's over half his size. Aggressive. See ya, mate. And the double clutch just catches everything. Maybe that's what hit me before. It didn't hook up. A few birds swooping in these waters and stuff. There's a little bit of bait and stuff scooting around, so it's obviously life here. So I don't want to find a Ray Charles on these flats. That's why you should wear good protective footwear. Always. There's definitely bait around this area. I'm seeing it flicker and stuff. It's just for some reason nothing chasing at all. I'm not on the wrong lure. Going too fast. We're off the donut though. With a undersized flathead and undersized brim. Nothing really changes on this channel change it to dang fishing and how to catch undersized fish. All right, found a rocky patch here. That's a different bit of structure, so hopefully that means there's something hanging around here. Yep, there we go. Awesome. Awesome. Might be a right fish, actually. I feel like he's tangled up now. Bit of bait getting spooked here. Yeah, nuts. Ah, oh, it's another one of you, you pesky bastards. Another one of you. Well. It's better than nothing, I suppose. Not the target, but that's okay. It's better than nothing. A little undersized brimson. See you, mate. Well, that was a short minute between bites, but it's all right. We'll um, see if there's any flat ones around here. Yeah, I was just saying there's a bit of rock here. So I thought maybe this might be a bit of better structure or something. So keep going. Alrighty, so about half an hour, 45 minutes has elapsed and the tide has dropped something significantly. So we're back up to the slot where we started and um, where we dropped a couple of fish and then we're gonna walk our way back down. I covered that area with the double clutch and uh, yeah, I only got that one little broom. So we're gonna go back up to the area where we were getting the hits. So we'll just see how we go. Changed lure as well. So now we've gone to MMD soft prawn. That's the medium size in the uh, 70 mil size, 70 mil lure. 
So we'll just see how we go. Glass out still, so very, very calm conditions here. Hopefully we can wrangle with something around here. Plenty of little mullet and little shrimp scooting in these shallows here. I'm spooking heaps. So we'll just see how we go. Just give them something a bit of a different presentation and if it's not working or tides ripping too much, then we'll go back to the clutchy. There you go. Epic. Second cast with a soft prawn. Yeah, it's not a bad little one. Epic. Epic stuff. Pretty convincing second cast with the softy. He's out of here. Thanks, mate. I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty convincing like second cast with the soft prawn on this little flat here where I heard the hits earlier. So we'll keep going, hey? See if we can't get any more and maybe something of bigger size. No way. Have I landed on something? Yeah. Oh, I dropped it. I landed on that fish. Oh. According to the weather charts, it was about half an hour ago the wind was meant to pick up, but she's bloody flat as a tack at the moment. Oh, there was another one. Dropped it. There he is, he got it. Yep. Oh, that's a good one, I think. Epic. Yeah, that's a better one, I think. I oh, know, similar sort of thing, undersize. He's just going spack on this flam fan flat. Absolutely spack. He's going absolutely nuts, this one. Cool. Hey, he's not even massive, he's just very feisty. He's probably just legal, but yeah. Pretty good. Like he's probably the biggest for the day for sure, but he's only probably just legal. There we go. Nothing crazy, just a little fella. Very cool. He's out of here. Oh, straight at my feet. If you want a lure that just, you know, catches fish, whether it's for you, your kids, or anyone, doesn't matter what sort of level they are at fishing, I think the soft prawn's a really, really good one because even though it, you know, it's a soft prawn, it replicates lots of little bait fish as well. So overall, everything eats a prawn. So if you put it in the right spot at the right time, they're gonna have a hard time saying no. You know I love the stuff from MMD and uh, I honestly throw what I'm confident in. And uh, this is definitely one of them, that's for sure. With this soft prawn, it's real, like, you know, soft plastics. Basics 101 when fishing for flathead. So cast it out there and let it sink to the bottom. And you'll, what you'll do is you'll see some slack line in your braid. And basically that's it, you know, falling. As soon as it goes slack, that means because it's hit the bottom. Once it's there, you kind of sit it there for a bit because sometimes the fish come over, you sit on top of them or whatever. And you just do a couple of hops, not too many off the bottom. Enough to just, you know, cause a little bit of puff of dust or a little dart or something like that. I feel like that's what gets them enticed is the little vibration and little um, little puffs of dust that you create and generally flatties will come from a little while away to come investigate a lure or something so it's always worth just you know casting and prospecting I think that's why you know jerk baits work really well because they're digging into the sand causing all commotions and stuff like puffs of dust and darting left and right I think that's what really gets them going absolutely stunning it's half the reason why I love going land based this time of year. It's not too hot, not too cold. Um, and yeah, you get these beautiful perla conditions. You don't really have to think about fishing at all. You can really, you know, just cast the lure out, give it a couple of hops, you know, not really put too much effort or thought into it and you can get some fish. So I love it, absolutely love it. 
Yep, there we go. Oh, I dropped him. No. I went to just release it and he just pulled it out of his mouth. No, no. One good thing about hard bodies is they have six hooks as opposed to one. Oh, I dropped it. Damn it. Pulled it out of his mouth. Tide's gonna turn in a little bit here. I think it's like another 10, 15 minutes. So an incoming tide I like as well. So start of that run in. Especially along this little stretch here in the past. Yep, there we go. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Oh dear. Might have just got him side hooked or something. He just had a good hit at it. Oh yeah, it's just a Another standard size flatty. Go son. Go like the clappers. You just hit pretty hard. That's another little fella. Oh, you would almost be. Oh, you done? It'd almost be legal actually. Yeah, chunky. Chunky monkey. See you, mate. Thanks for that. Out of here. So gentle. There's a guy further down or someone further down, about 50 to 100 meters that way, and they are, they look like they're fly fishing. That'd be cool. Out here on this sand flat. Chuck a comment down in the comment section if you'd like to see me do some fly fishing on these flats. I think that'd be pretty neat. That'd be pretty cool. No matter your responses and stuff, I'll probably do it anyway. Oh, I sent that lure. Whoops. Sorry, river. Ah, no, it wrapped around here. That's what happened. Aha, uh -huh. wrapped around here. The old rapsy dapsy. Rapsy dapsy, oopsie doopsie. All right, I'm just gonna go back to that double clutch just because it was in me little pocket here. So I didn't have to take my backpack off to retie or anything. My leader was in there too, so. Yeah, just to throw something a little different they haven't seen for about an hour or so. So just covering new ground and new fish. And um, this tide's gonna turn soon and it was working earlier. So just needed to stay in the zone and not drift away from it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, this one's going spack. Oh, he's not a bad one actually. Keep him down. Hey, is that right? Biggest of the day, probably. He's just going hard. Okay, you done? He's all right. I'm right here in the shallows. I might as well just walk it up. Very cool. How's the colors on them in the shallows here? There we go. Probably just legal, maybe just a bit undersized, but pretty average for this little flat here. Very, very cool. Look at the tail on it, gorgeous. A little white line on the end there. Gorgeous fish, gorgeous. All right, keep going. Tide's probably gonna turn here pretty soon, so. Probably got not too much fishing time left. Not necessarily because the bite's dying or anything like that. I just don't have a lot of time on my hands, but nonetheless had an absolutely cracking morning. You know, I get stoked with one undersized fish, so getting a handful in this short period of time, cannot complain. Oh, wow, that was sick. Oh, wow. I thought that was a, I thought that was weed or something. Nah, it was a fish chasing it. It was a floody chasing it. Look at that. Went to wind it back in. Wow. That was very cool. Thought it was some weed patch. Nah, this guy playing around with it. That was sick. That's not a bad one. He's probably legal. Oh. 
This is where you get a spike in your hand. Double clutch again. Getting her dude. Pretty average size today. Nothing crazy, but still fun land base. And on these flats. Look at the colors on them. Stunning. See you, mate. All right, guys. All done for another another session out in these flats here. Really, really cool. And um, I could have probably gone for a little bit longer, but the wind's starting to pick up now. It's to get pretty nasty later, and um, tide's pushing me off this little sand flat. So probably a good way to call it on a on a positive. And yeah, we ended up with about five or six flatties. I can't remember the exact numbers, and a handful of brim. Just using some really basic techniques, like that little die with double clutch there in the 70. I don't think colour really matters. It's just the black and gold. That's what I'm confident in. And use that soft prawn as well. So. Even the smaller MMD soft prawn would have worked. Any paddle tails, anything like that would have worked. But um, yeah, really, really cool. And um, no monsters or anything like that, but still really good way to spend, you know what, two, two and a half hours. We definitely got some numbers, which is cool. But yeah, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Really, really appreciate the love and the support. And uh, we'll see you in the next week or so. See ya.